for the translation function, there are these following uh, cases. We have to do field lookup, field update, function declaration, the new keyword, method call, and class declaration. So these are all the things that we want to support and that we're going to implement a translation for each of these cases. So let's start with field lookup. So in your uh, PDF, you're going to find this. So what is this? This is saying that when you want to translate x dot y, and this is the result that you want to generate. So the, on the right hand side, it's generated code. So whenever you see x dot y, what you have to do first, do a deref of x. The result is going to be an object, right? And then with that object, you're going to do look up field y. Okay. So simple JS, you have this. And in Lambda JS, this is the actual syntax. You would have get field, right? Which is the outermost thing. And then the first parameter is deref this. Of course, in your homework, you have to write the, um, the DST for get field, the AST for deref, the AST for this, for a variable called this, and the AST for a string. Next, let's see a field update field update, we have to do the following. So what do we need to do? First, we're going to um, translate the expression in the body, and we're going to start that in a variable. Okay, so we're going to gener generate a let binder that is going to hold the result of the translation of the evaluation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to generate the code for the assignment. To do the assignment, we need to first obtain the object of x, right? Um, and then obtain the field y. Uh, and then, sorry, and then uh, assign to the field y. So you, you look up the object, you perform an update, right? Uh, so the object is immutable. So when you update it, that returns, so the whole thing in blue, or this whole thing, so let's let's look at the JavaScript code, the the gener the JS code. So you you take you do the reference of this to obtain the um, the object. Where is this? Ah, this is in the, in this example. I use this, but here it's called X. Wonderful. Um, so first we have to dereference because X is a reference to an object, right? So we have to obtain the object by doing dereference this. Uh, so when we do the reference, we are doing a heap get in the memory, and that is returning an immutable object. And then we update a field, right, which is our intent. Uh, what we're updating is the result of evaluation of E, which is done in translation. Okay, that's what we have here. Uh, and then we're doing a set, right, uh, to a certain reference. So this is a reference, like X is a reference. So by doing x dot something, we are updating a, that reference. And in this reference, we had an object. So what we want to do is store the update of the object. And finally, we return in JavaScript, when you do an assignment, it returns the value of what was assigned. So in this case, we have to return data. Okay. Um, there is one problem, though which is uh, free variables and bound variable variables. Because we are, um, there's one important thing, which, and this is again the, the, the rule for uh, assignment of a field. Uh, and the problem here is that we are creating a let, generating the code for a let. So in this case, we called it data. So what, ha what would happen if my object were to be called data? Well, then you would have a problem because the generated code would be like this. So you want to do set data, uh, and then you update the field. Um, so what ultimately is happening is that the, um, the code that you're translating is talking about a variable that you, the, the translator also generated by coincidence. And, but because it's being generated in the code, 
and the variables have the same name, now they are the same variable. So this is a problem. And whenever you're doing code generation, you have to be very careful so that this doesn't happen, so that this problem doesn't happen. So what you need to do is whenever you have a let in your code generation and you're creating a new variable, you have to make sure that this variable is different from any variable of the user code, right? Because otherwise you would be changing the meaning of the program. So if you look at homework8.util, there is a way to generate a variable that is not captured by, um, so it will generate a new variable that is new and it's not touched in any of the code. Okay, now let's, let's look at function declaration. So function declaration is explained below. So what's going on here is you have a function. Functions have no names in simple JS, so they only have parameters. And this represents uh, a list of parameters and some code. And what you have to do is you have to allocate, right? Because it returns an object, so you have to allocate. And the object is encoded in such a way where you have two fields. In the first field is just a lambda where the body of the lambda is the translation of E. And you have another field called prototype where you allocate an empty object. It's the only, that's it. So in simple JS, you have this whole code. Okay. Uh, and this is, there's some thing going on here, but that's just so it can fit because the, the let is update field doesn't fit the slide. So I had to, create a function call <laughs> to something smaller. Okay. But I hope that it's still clear. So, but this is in the code that is, I just abbreviated the code that, that was generated in the body. So it, it's not related to this particular, the code that you're, you're going to generate is in yellow and that is, has not been abbreviated. So for the sake of the solution that you're going to give, uh, it doesn't affect it. Okay. So what you have to generate is an allocation and then inside an object creation with two fields. In the first field, you create a lambda and then inside you do the translation, the recursive translation. And in the proto field, you just store an allocated new object. Okay. Uh, finally, finally, I mean, next let's cover new. And new is, does a lot of things as we saw before. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to translate EF, right? Um, because EF is some object, some expression that is a reference to something. So what we need to do is we need to translate it and then we need to dereference it so that we get the actual object, right? Because ultimately when you're calling a constructor, it has to be a function. So if it has to be a function, um, it is a reference to an object. So first thing we need to do is we need to dereference it. Um, so the result CTOR now is pointing to the actual immutable object of the function constructor. And then what you want to do is you want to initialize the proto with prototype. Do notice that we use in the code generation dollar sign proto, and that's because in the um, in Lambda JS, they use dollar sign proto for some reason. They don't use underscore underscore proto. So they kind of diverged from the, the JavaScript tradition. No, but that, that is important here. Okay. And then use dollar sign code to initialize the code where we're calling the, the code of, um, the function we just dereferenced and we're passing the OBJ, which is the object we just allocated. Right. So if you have this simple code, it becomes generated as such. Okay. Where the difference is zero one, which is here, everything else is the same is allocated is generated. Uh, this is also variable. So this is variable as well. Okay. Next let's call cover method invocation. So method invocation is as follows. Um, what we have to do, I try to put parentheses to make things a bit clear because there's a lot of stuff happening. And the reason I wrote it in this way is just so that you can, um, so that I don't introduce new variables and it's not, um, clear. So first thing you need to do is maybe 
my suggestion to you is each of these AST nodes, you do a define. So first do a define of this bit of code, which is deref of x. So you, you create an AST node deref in a variable x, and that is stored somewhere. So let's call that uh, p1 obj. And then what you need to do is you need to generate another AST term, which is here in green. Okay. And in green, what we're doing is a uh, field lookup. So we're looking up field y, right? Because here we had x dot y. So we want to do object look up the, the field, the, the contents in the, in the object x. So the reference gets the object and this is a get field, right? Which is why you have this line of code here saying get field. Right, so first, get the object from the ref. Two, get the field. Three, is this code in purple, the ref. Again, because in your field you have another object, you have to look up the reference to obtain the actual object. So that would be this that you need to generate. Then we are at this point, right? So what we want to do is with the result of all that, look up field code get field of result of that code, finally call it. Okay, to call, we have to pass this node. The um, So the function is whatever was returned from here. This is the function. Uh, and that's what we want to call. And we want to call translate f, and then we want to pass x. Uh, well, we're going to pass the object, right? Which in this case is P1. Uh, in this case, also the, the function is called, oh, it should be translate F. This is actually a typo. Uh, and finally, you want to pass P1, which is the object. Where's the a P1 object. Uh, and then you want to pass 10 and 20. I'm going to fix this. There's two typos here. Okay. So here you want to pass x, which is this x. Uh, and finally, you want to translate the, the parameters. Okay. Um, what else? We will not be implementing function calls, so you can ignore this slide. Uh, the last bit that I want to cover is class declaration. Okay, and class declaration is actually a bit complicated. So what you have to do is, and it's complicated because of a few things. First of all, because you have to, um, you can extend something. So if you extend something, it has to be an object or a constructor. Um, so you have to translate that first. And then you have to, um, you have to create a copy of that parent so that you can update its prototype. So that's this bit right here. And then uh, you get the prototype of the current class that you want to inherit. Finally, you can declare the function of the constructor, which is defined in the body. Um, so you can do class, you can initialize the prototype field. And then for each method in the body, you can assigned it to the code of each method. So that's why it's a bit complicated because there's a lot of stuff happening in a class. You know, you have the constructor, you have the methods, you have what you're uh, extending, and you have to generate code for all of that. Uh, and that's the last one. Uh, and then in our next video, we're going to do a, a small recap, which will be our last video.